most people in the employee set of your company are concerned to a point if they're of maturity and of an age of maturity of what is their legal liability. Their legal liability obviously rests within the boundaries and the description of their actual job accountabilities and duties for your corporation and your company. And if I use different words to talk about it, I'm trying to remind you that there's a local company and a local shop, but there's usually a national corporation that is a part of a professional brand, whether or not the store locally is owned by some millionaire or whether the store locally is a part of a company. And I apologize at this moment in time, I'm sort of forgetting what that is, where someone has purchased the right to own that company or whether they're actually owned by the national or international corporation. So when we come to that concept of liability, we have to con come to the concept of project management or job management in terms of what are the boundaries of what you may and may not do and what are the stupidity of people that ruins company brand, professional image, and expectations by consumers of your shop and what they will say in the community about whether or not they should recommend or refer your store. Having said that, we have to look at the truth of the world, that the truth of the world is that most people are in the referral marketing business as opposed to the affiliated marketing business where people are affiliating themselves with products and benefiting from the fact that they might be talking about it on their blogs online or literally benefiting from the fact that they're promoting it. But a referral marketing business is what everybody does whether or not they get paid for it in American society. They go to a good restaurant, they talk about it with their friends and they recommend it. They go to a shop, they have outstanding service from an employee, and they tell people about it. So I think you're getting now the gist of what I'm saying. But there are a people in the community that are often abused by retail employees. And generally speaking, these are people who are homeless or indigent. So around your community and outside your shop, you might have the panhandlers that sit their motherfucking asses on a corner or on a chair or on a cardboard, on a carpet, on a specially designed thing from Salvation Army, and literally they sit there with a the cup, or they sit there with a the sign, and they take people's pocket change. We also, in different cities, have different types of people. Usually they're more youthful, usually they're a little bit more aggressive and assertive and expressive in their communication style, who might walk up to one of your customers and consumers in the parking lot and solicit them for money. Then, of course, you have other people who are living a life of poverty because of cybercrime, identity theft, fraud, employee bad behavior, records abuses on every level by people that are strangers, and simply overall immoral conduct of the world. Those people are far different in their mindset and their behavior in your community and your employees, your motherfucking employees, have to be able to recognize and acknowledge the difference. Someone who is living on a budget, regardless of how they got there, are going to have certain places that they need to buy things for their life. So what your company has to determine and what they have to accept is that they may not always like the, um, uh, the consumer that walks in the front door based on what they look like, what they wear, what they smell like, how they feel, because maybe their communication style is not the same or not relatable to the consumer, or maybe their concept of fashion is not the same as the consumer, or maybe their concept of personal hygiene or their ability to do it is not the same of consumers. So we have to look at the world in terms of compassion that you too, a retail employee, could be fired and become homeless. You too, a retail employee, need to be taught about backup plans and how not to screw your life into homelessness. But at the same time, we have to be recognizing city ordinances that do allow people the right 
to have in theory or theoretically what society might consider failed their life and they might choose to stay living in that personal area at the same time those consumers might come in your store looking for products or services and they need to be met with the same level of professionalism and regard and dignity as any other person in your store.